we are live. I believe we are live. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you're going to be watching this live, I'm going to try to check comments here on, the, on my iPhone. Um, but uh, we are live here with Cinderella de Groot. Am I saying your last name properly? Yes, with a beautiful English accent. So that's okay. <laughs> We are live with Cinderella DeGroote, who is an SLA client, and she has an amazing um, story to share with you guys. Um, it's, it's so inspirational to like, and so gratifying for me to be a part of watching your journey personally, just like from start to finish. Like, and you're still growing and expanding, right? There's still so it's so there's so it's never ending right but yeah. um it's just been such a blessing to be able to see you take a chance on yourself dive right in and get the amazing results that you're getting cinderella is currently experiencing a 70 percent closing ratio with her sales calls so closing enrolling soulmate clients into her premium programs and some of um high you know one-on-one -on -one even opportunities and so i just wanted to bring her on so we can just like chat you know, and just have an open, organic conversation about Cinderella's journey, um, what she was doing before, what she's been implementing now, not only through the SLA curriculum, but also on her own in order to elevate her uh, frequency enough to be able to manifest what she's manifesting for herself right now. So mm -hmm. welcome, Cinderella. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So how about you? we start at the beginning and just share a little bit about like our first discovery call, you hopped on a call with me, like we connected and then what happened? Like, well, I was, um, throughout the pandemic, I made already a career change into, um, full-time being a massage therapist and an energy healer. And I did that on call. So I was always carrying my table around, going from one client to another client. Uh, meanwhile, behind the scenes, I was really trying to think of ways how I could work less and increase my income. And I couldn't really find the right strategy. So I created something called Relaxercise, a new form of yoga where I, where I include a lot of um, mindfulness, breath work, meditation, things like that. But I was trying all these little things and I really, I really couldn't really get it how I wanted it. And it took me already two years being in that space of trying things out and there was a little progress here and there. I was successful, but it was not what I really ultimately wanted. It was not, and I, I was missing really strategies. I was missing literally the knowledge. I, I, I didn't know. And I remember that I was so tired at one point of it. I'm like, great, it is going, I'm successful, but it's not how I really envision it because I just wanna work less and earn more. And being a single mom here in California, how I'm going to pull that off. I mean, I need to do 100,000 massages <laughs> in a year to get my income level met, right? And I'm like, that's that's not the way. So um, I never invested in myself and I never knew that it was a thing that you could invest in a coach or a mentor. I come from the Netherlands. It's not really done there. Then I travel the world. I just never, ever realized that that was a thing. So... At one point, I saw an ad of you on the internet coming by about spiritual, specifically coaching for spiritual entrepreneurs. And I was like, holy crap. So that's me. And apparently, she knows all about it. <laughs> so I actually made up my mind already before the call that I was going to work with you. I never invested several thousands of dollars in myself because I had a problem with worthiness deeply ingrained in my one of my core beliefs um but I honestly intuitively it felt so strong and I'm very strongly guided by my intuition so I was like this is it I'm grabbing the money from somewhere I'm doing it I didn't even know really what the whole coaching program was about when we spoke well, you, I was just like, let's do it. I don't, I don't really mind what it entails. I feel this is my this is my way. I need to do it. So I signed up with you, and then um, yeah, more transformation happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after you joined the program, um, so you had a, a sprinkling of other programs, but none of them were taking flight. And I remember on our discovery call, we sort of like fine tuned, like I do on all my blueprint calls, like a program that really was more aligned with your 
what you were really feeling called to offer, what really lit you up versus like trying to maybe coming up with other things that you thought were necessarily a good idea, letting it come organically from within, like it's sort of extracting that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I really needed to become, uh, I had to create a program more from within and then find the people that resonate to it versus, oh, what do they need? Because I was first thinking, what is it that society needs? And then I try to kind of tailor something, but it, it, it had a big gap between my heart mm. and, and, the, and the program then. Mm. So yeah, when we got that kind of crystal clear, uh, a whole lot I could combine into my program of all the knowledge that I had already, but now driven from within. Mm, yeah. And so, and so we, we sort of like cher you cherry picked sort of like everything that really lit you up that were, and, and restructure because you already had programs out there. You were already teaching for the Chopra Foundation at this yeah. point too, right? But you were still doing massages on a regular basis. Yeah. And so create extracting this aligned program that really, like you said, you have this heart connection with it, right? Correct. This is key. This is what a magnetic program is, an aligned magnetic program that's really in alignment. When it's in alignment with your heart and soul, then it's going to be in alignment with the heart and soul of the people that really truly really need it. Yeah. And it was so beautiful to discover that. Mm -hmm. And so then um, what happened after you joined Sacred Leader Academy? Did you experience, because I feel like, you know, you showed up to, you showed up to calls. You didn't show up to all the calls, right? Like some women are showing up to every single call and everybody has a different journey and a different experience and it's all perfect. But I feel like you've really embraced what I talk about Empress energy and flow energy very, very quickly. Even yeah. though we had a little gap, uh, we had a little dip during that one vacation that you took and then we had to like click you back into alignment. But yeah. I feel like you, you know, and you're also all about a freedom-based lifestyle. So building a freedom-based business is a no-brainer for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was already a little on my way in living that lifestyle. But um, what really resonated was like, how do you want to live your life and adjust your business towards that? So I wanted to stay in the vibe of what is important for me, which is having a lot of fun, having a lot of freedom, a lot of free time, doing every day what I love. And, and that's how I live my life. I do not do things that I just don't want to do, that I don't like. I just eliminate it. It's very easy. So it's kind of, I can really stay in that vibe of, um, yeah, feeling aligned, aligned and happy, even when I don't work on it 24-7. And how we started off, I remember how we started off the program was giving me a lot of clarity, like listing what are my gifts, categorizing them, you know, putting them in subcategories. It was just a lot of clarity. And in no time, I had my program ready and my modules. It was like, okay, done. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was all very quick. And, and I just had everything I needed already inside of me. Mm. And I just had to like nicely put the puzzle together and that was it. And I just kept living my life. I, I knew that probably what's very important is to mention is that I felt that inside internally things needed to shift. Mm -hmm. So I was holding off on working, for example, with my virtual assistant because I felt I'm not ready. It's not a time yet. I needed to really break through a few things. Mm -hmm. And I gave that a little time. And one of the tips to kind of when you're feeling stuck somewhere is just change your focus mm -hmm. go focus on other things and through that you move the energy and then the energy of where you're stuck at will also change so i had a whole period that i didn't hop on the calls and i was dancing which is my big passion and i've been doing that professionally for a long time so i was dancing on vacation i was doing things that i just really enjoyed mm -hmm. until i felt like okay now it's the time to make that step into really going into sales. Mm, yeah. And this is so key because you really stepped into embodying what I refer to as the Empress energy that attracts, that doesn't need, but attracts through, and creates, right? Um, manifests, expert manifester, right? Um, by being in the flow of, and with joy and fun being your primary focus, right? It shouldn't feel like a soul line business should never feel like work. If it feels like work yeah. or if it feels like an obligation or you feel like you're forcing yourself to show up, then there's a, there's a shift in your inner 
reality that needs to click into alignment first and foremost before the exterior will be able to reflect that back to you, right? This is high spiritual universal laws that we're working with, you know? Yeah. Um, and so you really um, honored yourself to be able to do that early on. And mm -hmm. then this is why in module five, we talk first about energetic sales before we move into the actual sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, and you honored that, took that time to recognize that and do things that were fun that were going to put you into that energy yeah. and just let go of the neediness and stuff like that. Correct. And, and it was not, uh, I did some more things basically during the course though. Like um, I did have my inner reflection and I did some healing work, but not again, not like too pushy, not with too much pressure on myself, like, and not with a timeline and, you know how you can do all these spiritual practices and healing, but it can also be from a place of neediness. And I let that go. I did it really sincerely because I felt I wanted to do it. One of the big breakthroughs for me was when I was in Costa Rica on a yoga retreat. I came back up it in January this year. Uh, I met someone who did Psyche K, which is a certain way of accessing your subconscious mind to break through certain um, negative beliefs you have about yourself. And I worked in that one session through the fact of not feeling worthy to earn 10K a month. Mm -hmm. and, but it was my goal. And I felt it was misaligned, something that I wanted, but inside I didn't resonate to it. Mm -hmm. So that helped me break through. I did also some, you know, throughout the years, pranic healing sessions mm -hmm. to just clear out whatever needed to be done. I did um, a soul realignment session for myself to do all the clearing work on a karmic level the blocks and restrictions because i thought you know if that's what i'm going to deliver to people mm -hmm. i need to have lived through that and i completely need to be in a clean positive space mm -hmm. so i did that all very organically without pressure and when the moment was there and when the moment was right um and it just started to move like the VA at one point started to do the work for me and I was just completely busy with having fun and I just everything rolled in and started to roll in and, and, mm. and yeah and I don't know I'm just <laughs> like I guess myself about it <laughs> yeah so now um uh now I love that and I think you did some you experiment you you do plant medicine and other things that have helped like escalate yes. your own journey right Absolutely. so I came just yeah I came back from an incredible ayahuasca uh, ceremony that's of course uh, intense challenging but man that that throws you right where you need to be <laughs> So I love that. And then, um, yeah, so taking accountability for your own inner journey, your own inner purpose, right? Because we have an outer purpose and then we have an inner purpose. Our inner pur purpose is our own ascension journey, our own self-realization, our own, you know, moving into alignment within. Mm -hmm. So then our business can be a reflection of that. And yes, correct. And if, in order to show up and hold space, like we should I believe, in my opinion, making our own personal growth and clearing a way and opening uh, to receive uh, what we deserve as a worthy being, or like all of it is all part of the process in order to, you know, create the life and business that you love, like hands down, period. It's 90% your own inner energetics uh, and a little bit of strategy that is so aligned, you know, like it has to feel aligned. Um, and so now, fast forward, um, now you're Happen on sales calls, people are finding you. You said you just before we went live, you said, Yeah, now people are just like organically reaching out. You don't even, you know, so you're like there's strategy, and then there's also what I call the lighthouse effect when you're fully standing in your power and you're shining your light and you're sharing your gift unapologetically and you really just own it. Like you are a lighthouse, and everybody else, like within frequency of you that's resonating with you, that's already mapped really to work with you, is gonna find you. Yes, and that's so beautiful because, you know, when you when you start a program like this, you can have your hesitations or you don't know, but I let go of all the expectations. I knew I tried everything. It's not there yet. I knew I exhausted all my resources of putting everything of what I could do, and I just hit the, how do you say it, like the, the roof. I didn't know anymore. It was done. So this was my only hope. Like, it's either this or it 
It's nothing. Or more, the same, or more of the same, right? Or more of the yes. same. When you hit your head on your ceiling, you got to recognize when you're hitting your head on the ceiling. Yes. You have to decide, do you want to keep hitting your head on the ceiling or do you want to make the ceiling the floor? Absolutely. And that's what I did. And that's what your program definitely did. And yeah, I'm just, wow, beyond grateful how that feels to make an investment and you, within no time, a few months, you triple it. Mm. All coming back. So yeah, I'm getting chills right now. I love that. Oh my god, it's crazy! Yeah, because you read the success stories online, it's always like, oh, you never know. And now it is happening to me. I, 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 I can absolutely achieve all that I want. It's, it's already happening. It's, mm. it's not a joke. <laughs> it's not a silly story. It's like it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Why, how about you share a little bit about your program for anybody that's listening to this because they could be a perfect fit. So can you elaborate a little bit about what you created in Sacred Leader yeah. Academy? I will try to keep that short and sweet. So uh, I believe that we need to incorporate mind, body and soul to completely manifest the life that you want. On all levels, it needs to work together in all dimensions. So I do Akashic Record reading to soul realign you clear all the karmic patterns, etc. I give you a lot of insight about your soul profile. Um, after that, we're moving into more the mind on the second dimensional level. So breaking core beliefs, uh, looking at your negative thought patterns, looking at your strength, your desires, uh, your self-saboteur that comes up, really self-explore what is in, happening in your mind with your feelings, you against the world what is that interaction then i uh, move into another module where we're going to resolve all that like uh, reprogram the subconscious mind uh, we're going to talk about effective ways of journaling creating your own affirmations the power of forgiveness and gratitude all these type of practices that can really shift from where you're stuck at into moving forward um, after that i do a so-called a reading where I retrieve your manifesting blueprint. Mm. That's on level and to see where you are misaligned. And then you get real insight on how you specifically can manifest because it's not like one, one way fits all. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole fun part start because we're really going into what you want to create, what you need to shift in daily life on th the third dimension, tangible actions to really move forward and become more and more into alignment and you see your life unfolding in the way you want, whether it's your inner world that you want to shift or your external world. Um, and that is about, you know, six months. Mm. I love that. So yeah, definitely I'm going to include links to Cinderella's program wherever you're watching this video. So if you resonate with that, feel free to reach out to Cinderella directly. Thank you. Um, so when you compare the programs you were doing before compared to the program you have now, how does it feel? Amazing. Uh, everything combined, it felt with purpose and it took a little bit of time to figure it out. But this is my purpose. I feel highly uh, attracted to working with any, any, everything beyond the physical body. So I work with energies, uh, with the energy body, and with the soul level. So to me, it feels complete. I feel complete. There is just no doubt. And that's why it probably goes so well, because there's just not, not, not zero doubt. This is what... Yeah. There's no doubt, and there's actually absolutely also no doubt that you can help somebody when they pop up on a call with you. Like you are fully confident that you can deliver the results because it is coming from that place. Because you're extracting it from you know what's in your heart and what your soul is calling you to create. And then when you when you extract it from that place and create an aligned program, like you can show up in your power in confidence and know, like, I know I can help this person. Like it's almost a disservice not to talk about your program, right? Because you know, it's so valuable to the right people that you want to share. You want to talk about it. You want to hop on podcasts about it and things like that. Right. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, no, it's absolutely like that. I must say it got a little bit more, um, amplified when you do get the feedback from the people uh mm -hmm. first of all they are, they are just super um positive in their responses towards me like i approach them very authentically and they are just so appreciative like there is no not a single thing that was negative about me approaching the people and then when i hop on the calls 
for example, there's one client, a current client, who told me, well, I have been to so many therapists and what you deliver in one call has so much more value and truth. I got so much clarity and insights in this one hour with you than in all these therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's so beautiful to hear. And, and I cannot really explain it. it. As I say, it comes from within. I make a genuine heart to heart connection. Mm -hmm. I tune into their energy and, and beyond, right? Um, mm -hmm. And if you receive these positivity back, it really reconfirms like I am on the path because they are stoked with it. They're making big steps and progress towards where they need to be. And man, the world needs a lot of help right now. We need to shift our consciousness. People are wondering, they're lost. So, you know, that's my only purpose. Like you have a meditation, I believe in your program that is a visualization where you completely need to step into making that promise to yourself this is what I'm meant to do and, and I will do it whether I have to lose friendships or jobs. I'm completely um, owning my purpose. Oh my God, man, so many chills. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, many chills, so many chills with that. And so, yes, it's called the, um, yeah, there's a there's an attunement in Sacred Leader Academy that gets you to fully step into your calling. When you first did that, did you step right through? Did you did you visualize yourself going through? Or was there hesitation? Was there fear or anything that popped up before you did that? Yeah, there was a little hesitation when I was in the visualization at the door that I need to step through. Um, hmm. But I did the work. I take a few deep breaths and I, I did it. Mm. And then I closed the door and, and, and <laughs> I love that. And then you shut the door. There was no, there was no way back. back. There was no going back. There is no. absolutely no, that is so symbolic of right. the journey that you took, right? There was no, maybe there was a little hesitation, a little fear. You looked it in the eye, you took a step and then you shut the effing door right behind you. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And that's amazing. Like life is unfolding beautiful and gosh, Mm -hmm. I, I now know that my future will be even more beautiful because of that I can serve people. And in return, I will get my abundance and prosperity. Mm -hmm. It's really, you gave also a lot of very strong affirmations to talk uh, through uh, when we did it. Uh, one, for example, um, people invest in my services, then they invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. We are just the pathway, the conduit for them. Mm -hmm. to really work mm -hmm. on themselves and transformation and I did all these affirmations and they're so strong mm -hmm. especially after this ayahuasca weekend <laughs> medicine <laughs> you touched on a couple of good points that I have to talk to real quick speak on real quick one was that by you showing up in your light and being of service your prosperity will then come to you you don't even have to worry about it no. like it's a byproduct of you stepping into full servant leadership and divine service, right? Yeah. Fully committed to your calling, shutting the door on excuses, moving forward with your mission and why your soul came here and what your soul came here to do. No yeah. more bullshit. Knowing that you will be taken care of and divinely protected and divinely guided and, and, and abundantly supported on your mission. Yeah. Knowing that. And then the other thing that you touched on, what was your, um, um, yeah, people are investing through in themselves through you so when you said earlier on this call i never invested myself in myself in thousands of dollars for this no so there's a lot of spiritual teachers and healers that might be listening to this that think they have an aversion to allowing someone to invest in their programs to receive money to receive compensation especially to price their program at several thousand dollars because they feel like they're taking from somebody if they do that and so this is important point to, to, to make because this is about like, what if I never gave you that experience for you to fully go all in, all chips on the table, investing in yourself so you could do what you know you came here to do. If I didn't give you that opportunity and I didn't hold your feet to the fire and it was just like some hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar program or something like that, that you could easily just fluff off every time your ego flared up or something like that, right? Like yeah. 
speak to that for just a second. I'm investing in yourself and that opportunity that was made available to you because it really is a growth opportunity, an expansion yeah. opportunity, right? For me, making that decision was probably the biggest shift in my transformation because I always, I went all through, yeah, through years I was just not, yeah, not investing in anything. Always looking at the price tags in the shops. Oh no, that's too expensive, too expensive. But what I was saying, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it to buy a $40 or something or $400. So making this statement was this is, I'm worth it. Even if it's a $10,000 investment, you think you are worth it. And that shifts a whole lot. And I understand now that um, mon money, um, it, it's all energy, it's a flow. It goes hand in hand, creative energy, sexual energy, life force energy. You need to let it flow. That's similar with investments in yourself. It's all, it flows. Um, so, I mean, it was the start of, of the biggest transformation, probably making that investment in myself. I remember you, you know, I offered you the opportunity, you had to figure out some financing. You had yeah. a few days to figure out where you're going to come up with it. It wasn't like it was just like sitting there and it was just like a slam dunk, like, yeah, I already have this saved up. It's here it is. You know, you were messaging me like I'm in, like, I have to figure this yeah. out. And you were restructuring whatever you were doing on your back end to make it happen. Absolutely. So I, I hope that everyone sees that. The, I, I honestly, I almost think sometimes that it's an excuse because I have been in that position. So when people say I cannot afford it, I need to wait, I need to wait. Uh, I, 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 to me, it's a sign like you're not ready to fully step into transformation. Mm -hmm. Money just represents that in a way because, um, money is energy energy flows it's always possible to have it come to you or mm -hmm. find ways uh, with all due respect to some people's private situations obviously um but it's a statement towards yourself when you say that now i walk in the shops man i haven't experienced this and i never look even at, at price tags i just invest <laughs> whatever Oh my God, I love and it. I'm never, and I'm never without money, it always comes. I don't ever, comes. I don't look it at my up. statements. It just shows up, right? It just shows up to support you because yes. you are supported. Um, because yeah. God is your supply and you are doing God's work. I truly believe you're doing God's work. Yeah, and the, you know what the biggest uh, thing is probably for people to take home of this? You can have it all in your mind. You can understand what you, Sarah, are saying. You can comprehend it. You might think of it like that. The whole trick is the embodiment. You need to start feeling it. You need to feel it. Once you feel it, it's completely, it's completely there. Mm -hmm. Without the emotion behind it, it just stays up there. It's not going to really- It can't be conceptualized, guys. It can't be conceptualized in your mind. It's gotta be dropped into your heart. You have to embody it. You have to feel it. You have to live it. You have to- breathe it you have to yeah it has to flow through you it has to be you know it has to be you can't fake it there's no faking it the universe knows if you're faking it the fake that it's going to give you more faking it you know what i mean more reasons to fake it basically yes absolutely be embodied yeah so i think that people should check in with themselves really going even more and more to to the inner world really feeling check yourself like am i feeling it is it real you do not feel it work first on really feeling yourself because all the answers are within you really do the work the inner work yeah and i like that you said that earlier and then we'll we'll wrap up here um that you said everything was already within you everything that was already within you there was nothing else you had to do when we crossed paths everything was already within you how much one-on-one -on -one coaching or coaching did you do per se prior, like in an actual coaching scenario, like online coaching scenario? No, um, nothing. I, I, I never ever did coach. Um, okay, so this is another thing because a lot of people think that they have to do like even one-on-one -on -one coaching for a year before they can no. fall into holding a container to help on a scalable way, like well, lots of people at the same time. No. Myth, myth. myth. Yeah, it is a myth. <laughs> a myth. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so, and did you have a large social media following or email list? Uh, no, no email list. 
no social media following not really that that's not now it's all happening it's like now it's all happening no, no large social media following no email list no one-on-one -on -one coaching experience no massages and stuff like that and, and your retreats or whatever you you were doing like in-person stuff right yeah um and yeah and so that's just some myths that I wanted to bust for some people that are like, oh yeah, well maybe she had a large list or, oh yeah, well maybe she had a large following or, oh yeah, maybe she had this or that. Um, no. None. Mm. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. So um, let's just wrap up with any, do you have any, like if someone were th in your shoes right now, they know they want to step into their purpose and in their, in their mission. Um, what tips of advice do you have for them? I would say it's a magical world we live in and that what you see is not all there is. I would say go inwards more and more and get to know yourself first, really uncover your own layers and completely step into the um, frequency of loving yourself, uh, accepting yourself um, and feeling complete. Of course, don't wait for it, for that all to happen before you start mm -hmm. to sell your program. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another way of procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Just do the work. Meanwhile, you are on this path. And I love that. I love that too. And that's, that's, that brings up another program that I'm in, I'm in collaboration with that helps people really step into elevating themselves within first before they step into divine service, even though they know that that's their calling, they know that it's there, yeah. but not putting the carriage before the horse so they can really come into inner alignment first and foremost yeah. and come into that state of presence and then move into divine service where everything will just click much easier for, for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, important. And very important, I love Being it. Being really honest to yourself and very loving. But yeah, it, it is really true. If it's not flowing, then unfortunately there is some, there are still some blockages. Yeah. And then it's better to step away or to resolve it rather than trying to push your program, really. Yeah, I love it. Oh my God, I love it. Thank you so much, Cinderella, for this time. I know your time is valuable and you probably um, have some dancing to do on the beach somewhere. <laughs> I love I'm it. signing I up actually to other clients. So, <laughs> what'd you say? I'm signing up to other clients right now before heading to the beach. So, oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, perfect. I love that. So, um, I will let you go, everybody. If you're resonating with Cinderella, check out the links wherever you're watching this. This will, whether you're listening to this on the podcast or on any of the you know social media channels, her link will be available. Um, so definitely. Um, Tap it. follow her on Instagram. Do you want to shout out your Instagram handle? Yes, please. It's divine underscore Cinderella coaching because Cinderella is my real name. Mm, I love Cinderella. And and you help people live their fairy tale life. So I mean, yes. isn't it perfect? Like when oh, I think it's perfect. This or is, is it the babe? That's <laughs> perfect. So you were destined for this, you were made for this, like you're in, and your whole life prepared you for what you're doing now. And now you're just completely on point with your purpose and your mission. And then, yeah, it's all about alignment. It's so much about alignment with that. So yeah. I just want to um, congratulate you on all of your success. It's been a pleasure to be a part of it. It's such a blessing to be a part of it and watch it um, unfold for you. Beautiful. It wasn't for you, I would not have been here, honestly. So. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Isn't it fun how we all rise up within our own um, gift and we're here to help support each other collectively. Like as you rise up and you, then you help other people rise up and I rise up and then we just dance with each other and we all come together with our own unique gifts to yes. help elevate, you know, Absolutely. And, 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 and try to you know everyone, everyone that's watching, try not to see it as competition because you have your own energy, your own vibration that you radiate out. And we all, we might have all the same type of program. It doesn't matter. There's billions of people in the world and we will attract the people that we talk their language to. Like Sarah talks a different language, has a different energy than I have. So we will find our own clientele, whether we maybe even you know, share the same type of program. Yeah, I 
Yeah, totally agree. It's all about, um, there's no competition. There's absolutely no competition. We're all coming together to help elevate, you know, collectively the planet, yeah. you know, through, and there's so many people that are looking for, if you're watching this and you have a program or you're being in you, um, or you, you, this is resonating with you in any way, shape or form, you have to be able to trust that, your calling, the thing that's bubbling up within your soul that you know you want to be doing is there for a reason. It's divinely guided. Mm -hmm. And there are souls on the other side of that waiting for you to show up and shine in your light, in your truth, in your authenticity, in your power, so that you can step fully into your purpose and mission and help them to do the same. Absolutely. And we have so many people and we have so many people need help. So we need a lot of, a lot of people like us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and that, I think that's all for now. I'm going to be responding to any questions or comments on the replay because I know a lot of people are checking in on the replay for this. So feel free to um, drop your comments or questions for, for me or for Cinderella, wherever you're watching this. And I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Namaste.